Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. to Angie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and hitting share, hitting retweet. Those, those are the things that help us, friends. They help us greatly. So thank you. And get straight into the I'm going to go to screen share here so that you guys can see it as I talk about it. Um, Alan Salazar of Prison Planet Trump campaign reveals a secret weapon undercover Trump voters. Now let me let me tell you in a nutshell what the undercover Trump vote is. It's um the undercover Trump vote speaks about the number of people who are likely going to vote for Donald Trump, but for whatever reason are afraid to admit it. Maybe that's because they're worried that other people will call them racist, that other people will laugh about it. You know what? I've heard both of those same kinds of shenanigans all the time. And you know what? None, it doesn't matter. None of it has. I, I just let it go in one ear and out the other. As a matter of fact, I met this gentleman. Uh, he was an African American today at the corn concert, which is why I look so disheveled. I was you know, damn straight. I was in the pit. Um, I went ahead and saw in this moment and Rob Zombie and corn. And uh, thankfully, uh, met a gentleman in the mosh pit. Uh, Huge guy, happened to be black. Friendliest guy there. Came back to the car, we chilled, and we waited for the people to pull it. You know what? Who cares about what sticker is on your car? Yes, there's a Trump sticker on my car. You know what? That black man is welcome to come in my car anytime I see him. But having said that, there's a lot of people out there that are worried that they they won't say what it is that they're, they're going to vote for, what it is that they believe, because they're worried that someone's going to label them as. Uh, racist or you know you hate the poor or some other garbage like that well this report is saying that there seems to be so many of those people actually that it's very likely going to go ahead and my hair is just terrible isn't it very likely going to go ahead and put trump right over at the top and we're going to go ahead and cover that here Undercover Trump voters could help pull off a decisive victory in November, less than 100 days, friend. Trump's campaign manager suggested in a recent interview. Speaking to the UK's Channel 4, again, uh, the UK, where he said he was going to do business despite the uh, bickering that happened with the initial uh, onset of the mayor there. It was entitled, Could Trump Win? And Kellyanne Conway said polls showing Trump losing to Hillary are manufactured by the media and do not reflect the actual public sentiment. Right there, you can see it. Um, the polling numbers for Donald Trump are looking pretty bad now, aren't they, at the moment, reporter Matt Frey asked. Not all of them, no. Just the cherry-picked polling numbers that are put out by the media outlets that are also bent on his destruction, Conway responded, adding that the online polling consistently shows something much different. Our internal polling, it goes on, is proprietary and confidential, so I won't dismiss, I won't discuss it, excuse me, but I will tell you that Donald Trump performs consistently better in online polling, where a human being is not talking to another human being about what it is he or she may do for the election. Conway explained that American voters are under social pressure to appear as though they dislike Trump, but that anonymous online polling affords voters the ability to make choices without otherwise being ridiculed. And it all goes back to this ridiculous love affair we have with popularity in this country. Uh, do I want more people watching and sharing like many of you are now? Of course I do. Yes, I need that. If I don't, then it's absolutely useless to do the damn show. I get that. But this notion that I am going to, like, bend over backwards to get people to do it, trim my hair, and, you know, uh, don't, to somehow not speak the way I speak, or not say the things I say because I might offend somebody. That's not likely ever going to happen here, but it seems to be something that means a whole lot to a lot of people out there. They're the same people that, you know, I like Rihanna, you know, they absolutely know she's terrible. Um... It's because it becomes socially desirable, especially if you're a college-educated person in the United States of America, to say that you're against Donald Trump. Now, here's what's funny about this to me. Um, Trump has a Ivy League education second to none. So this notion that Donald Trump isn't an intelligent person is based solely on nothing. It, it's rooted firmly in midair, okay? It, there's no basis whatsoever for this. 
Um, the hidden Trump vote in this country is very significant proposition, Conway said. Asked if they have a number on so-called undercover voters, Conway replied, I can't discuss it. It's a project we're doing internally. I call it the undercover Trump vote, but it's real. And I think that if you go around this country and talk to people, you'll see that it's real as well. Yeah, you certainly will. For instance, on the way to Boston Music Center today, I got behind a bumper sticker that said, Bernie, 26. You don't see Hillary anything. There's one bonehead down the street from me that uh, is probably flying the, uh, the, uh, the hitler -y logo in his front yard. But that is literally the only one that I have seen at all. I'm seeing Bernie and I'm seeing Trump. So, I mean, there better be a lot of undercover Hil uh, Hillary fans if, if, if the analogy is to be used on the other side. I don't see anybody. And I, I swear to you, absolutely nobody getting excited about, excited about her run at all. The campaign manager's words were quickly reinforced when the fray interviewed Trump impersonator John Domenico, which I showed you a piece of, in front of the White House, who broke character to disclose that he's personally witnessed. You travel all over the country doing this shtick, what's the impression that you get? What's your own personal polling telling you about his popularity? Fry asked. I've been on the road for almost nonstop since last August, he said. I would say he's going to win in a landslide. And you know what? I've been very hard on the way Trump has treated the Fourth Amendment, or I should say has mistreated. I've said that he's wrong on Snowden. Okay, I'm not blind to the things that Trump has that's not going on. But what, what, what are the alternatives in this election? You've got Jill Stein, who wants to bankrupt the nation as quickly as Bernie Sanders now. You've got Gary Johnson that's trying every day to act more and more like Bernie Sanders and less and less like the true libertarian base that originally supported him, myself included. I voted for him last night. And um, you've got Clinton. Let's not even go into that. And you've got Trump. The only other person I would even remotely root, uh, root for is Dickie Duncan, Richard Duncan. And uh, hear those crickets? Nobody knows who Richard Duncan is. But as far as his platform, he's the only other person I'd even contemplate voting for, and he's not that great on the board himself. Uh, louder with Crowder, we got a little bit of a, uh, 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 for all the race baiters here. Um, again, we don't, we don't do the race thing on this show. I don't care what color you are, but I do keep you abreast of the many things that are going on in uh, that realm for people that do live by it, like a, like a sword or a plowshare. Pager you, and there's the link for those of you that need it, uh, has an educational video for everything. And in this video, they ask the question, are cops racist? Or more specifically, is it common for blacks to be unfairly shot by police? Judging by most media coverage and SJW responses, you think so. And there's links that say why you think so. But as it turns out, the numbers state otherwise. So am I about to say that white people are getting shot more than black people? Yes, I am. And you're going to say, okay, well, Sam, that doesn't really count because there's so many black people. There's so many less black people than there are white people. Therefore, that's only because of more white people, right? Wrong. That is taken into account. They are statistically even. In other words, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have eliminated the minority to pull it as an even one-on-one -on -one percentage. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. It's, it's algebra, if that helps you any. A recent deadly force study in Washington State, if I can speak, university researcher Louis James found that police officers were less likely to shoot unarmed black, sus black suspects than unarmed white or Hispanic ones. Sam, you just stick up for the white race. Well, I'm also part Hispanic, so maybe I'm sticking up for them too. In any event, they're not being, they are also being disproportionately shot. Harvard economics professor Roland Fryer found that blacks were 24% less likely than whites to be shot by officers, even though the suspects were armed or violent in Houston. When they're not busy peacefully rioting, do you ever hear Black Lives Matter mention those statistics? Yeah, that's not a thing, just like systemic police racism isn't a thing. For a group that claims to care so much about blacks, oft times exclusively, they don't seem to care about the statistics regarding the death of 
of black people. See, statistics bring to light the fact that the inner cities have been destroyed by leftist policies. And again, um, there, there are, there's a large part of me that has always been classical liberal. I, I get it. The, the whole freedom of speech thing, the whole keeping the government out of our bedroom, the, uh, the whole non-conformity against an elitist structure that bands like Clash, the Dead Kennedys, and the Sex Pistols did. Yeah, I know they were leftist bands, but you know what? At some point, we could at least amicably, amicably meet on certain issues. What we're talking about at the left now is this get mine at any cost, give me something free crap. Um, thus, when it's, he writes, when it comes to hyper-liberal social justice warriors, numbers aren't as effective as, say, a hashtag. Don't judge. Math is hard, you bigot. But even if they're ignored, the facts remain. Meanwhile, racism, not so much. Clearly, this isn't to say that there are no instances of racism ever. Page or you is simply pointing out the fact that blacks aren't unfairly targeted. They make a compelling argument considering they did actual research and stuff. I know, I know, I can already hear Sean King's cultural disappropriated cornrows shimmering with anger. I love how Crowder writes. But again, it, it points out to what I've been saying for a very long time, and that is that we are being systematically divided by race. We are being sold lies, we are being packaged lies to keep each other at each other's throat. Because the last thing the, uh, the government wants is for me to meet a cool black guy in a mosh pit and invite him to my van while the uh, venue clears out. They want us fighting and arguing and doing everything else, because if we actually look at the numbers, we're all being hosed in one way or another by the same New World Order. And guys, I've got lots to get to, and if I, if you don't go away, but I would just be remiss if I didn't tell you that right here is Sticker Junkie, the awesome sticker making company that you are going to go to. And you see how cheap they are now? They're going to be even cheaper for you, because you're going to use the promo code correct news, or you're going to type in correct news and you're going to get them at an even lower price than you've already seen there. Uh, economic collapse. This is interesting. Again, getting away, I want to do shows that don't exclusively deal with just politics all the damn time. There are certain things that can happen that will trigger a lot of problems in terms of availability of fuels. For instance, if you live near a nuclear power plant, um, in the event that it was to melt down, you would have an almost impossible time getting high enough. In the event that a uh, significant terrorist attack, I don't mean a car bomb, I mean, uh, God forbid, a chemical, biological, or a nuclear attack of some kind. And again, uh, with, with terrorists, it's most likely a, a dirty bomb new threat, not a uh, nuclear bomb, as we say, that we all know. That certainly is possible. But suitcase nukes, and many people don't know this, suitcase nukes are incredibly hard to use because they're, yeah, they're about the size of a suitcase theoretically. But for one thing, they weigh a ton. You can't just carry one around without someone noticing it. Uh, I, I guess a gigantic man with a suitcase would also probably trigger a lot of people. So that's not going to help. They have to be kept at a certain temperature. They have to be maintained... You can't just steal a suitcase and nuke it. But you can take um, radioactive substances and put them on a glorified hand grenade and create quite a, quite a bit of problem. And if that was to happen, if, or in any number of things, it's a couple of disasters off the top of my head. That's the writer in me. Um, there are certain things that are going to disappear off the shelf first. And here's a look at them. Uh, do I have a lot of these? No, I don't. I'm, I'm terribly unprepared. I do have weapons, and I do have a small amount of silver and gold and platinum. Uh, thieves, don't even think about it. No, I don't keep it at the house. Um, I'm going to, in the event that something horrible happened, be in a decent position to barter. But it is better to have actual tangible items in case it's not bad enough that people do start bar bartering with gold and silver. That's only going to happen during a huge breakdown. So this was interesting, and I wanted to go ahead and give it to you here. I'm not going to give you the whole preamble, but basically one recent survey found that 80% of all basic foodstuffs are currently unavailable in Venezuela. And that, that's a company that's experiencing a socialist meltdown, kind of like we would if Bernie was elected. 
So here's what's going on in Venezuela as the company has, as the country has absolutely melted down. It says there are some things to buy besides salt. There are fresh vegetables and fruits, dairy products, but no milk. Some cereal, lots of snacks, and a few canned goods. Basically, it's the way Pastel eats already. The only meat is sausages. There are three kinds of cheese. The only problem, a kilogram of each costs more than a fourth of our monthly wage. Basic foodstuffs, the things that Venezuelans want to eat, such as cornmeal, wheat flour, pasta, rice, milk, eggs, sugar, coffee, chicken, mayonnaise, yuck, margarine, cooking oil, and beef are conspicuous in their absence, and there is no toilet paper, no sanitary napkins, no disposable baby diapers, shampoo, toothpaste, hand soap, or deodorant. Um, Alright, real quick, you can pretty much factor out the cheese and the mayonnaise. Excuse me, either the chicken, the, the chicken, the cheese, and the mayonnaise. Because unless you're buying them as like the uh, military rations, your mayonnaise, your chicken, and your uh, cheese is not going to be worth Crap, neither is your milk. So, you know, the last thing I, I would worry about is on the list are those. But the other ones, the sanitary napkins, toilet paper, deodorant, yeah, you know, that, that would matter. And it's saying here those go first. Uh, if you don't have it, well, Venezuela has, and there's links to it, been hunting cats, dogs, and pigeons for food and killing and eating zoo animals. And uh, there's, they're called uh, prepper goods, unfortunately, which gives it a bad name. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with being prepared. Amen. Um, it says here at the, in Venezuela there's the rise of a barter economy. Again, we're talking using Venezuela because of the uh, system collapse there. Many of my urban friends are now planting vegetables in their outdoor spaces. If they have any, or in pots. Another friend who is a hairdresser is charging clients food for their hair. For a shampoo and a dry, she charges a kilo of cornmeal, saying that she doesn't have time to stand the client. So, that's what, if you have a skill like that, that may save you. Make sure you stock up then on shampoo if you have that kind of a skill. That's why I'm covering this real quick for you. Other things that cannot be overstated. There's going to be a list here, and I'm going to read it to you right in a row. Get ready. Flashlights, batteries, generators, propane, can openers, water filters, water containers, anything related to self-defense, axes, knives, and sleeping bags. I would say an axe would also be in self-defense, but okay. Tents, first aid kits, matches, candles, firewood, shovels, bottled water, warm clothing, lanterns, and portable radios. Now remember, these are all things that can be traded as well. So there you go. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It just seemed important to me because I have a lot of people that tune in to stay abreast. And, uh, you know, I, I would be leading you astray if I didn't do things like that. If you have the time. That brings us to selenium. Now, you can look up Dr. Glidden and a few other people that have done studies on this. But in a nutshell, selenium is one of the most important substances in the world to take for cancer prevention. Uh, Dr. Glidden is one of the people that actually took the argument about selenium to the FDA. And selenium is now officially allowed to say that it has been known to help deter cancer growth. What's even better about it? Um, if you've already had cancer, there's something about it, no, I'm not smart enough to know, that makes it even better in preventing it from coming back. Again, you're going to have to look up the nuts and bolts on that. But I know Glenn, Dr. Glenn talks about it. I, I think Caldecott does. Don't quote me on that. And again, I'm going to cover the pharmacy that comes from those pumps of things because they're not paying me anything. But right there, selenium. I take it every day. And uh, I mean, it, it's almost free. It's one of the cheapest vitamins you can get. And it, it, it's, it's wonderful. This is a 200 microgram. So good is selenium, and no, I'm not selling it. I'm not about to pitch you anything at all. You can find it in the store, get whatever brand you want. Um, selenium is found in seaweed, and because the Japanese eat so much seaweed, some protection was given to people depending on how close they were and remained to the disaster because of their high selenium content in their diet, which we don't have in America. Now, I don't advise eating seaweed after Fukushima now. It's probably a dreadful idea. But keeping selenium in is, is very helpful. 
and we're going to go into what it does now because now it goes in another direction of freaking awesome. Studies selenium may stop Zika birth defects. Uh, friends, if you went to the Olympics or if you know somebody that went to the Olympics, please forward them this video because if they got bit by the wrong mosquito, they could be giving birth to babies with deformed brains and things like that. And it just seems to me that they should be um, that they should be giving selenium tablets to people that land in the airport from the Olympics. That's what would happen if we lived in a in a world where the UN actually did something other than find ways to kill people and stick up for Muslims, um, radical Muslims, I might add. This is ridiculous. Every Muslim, every Indian, Hindu, white person, black person that is landing from any destination from the Olympics should be offered free selenium tablets, plain and simple. The dietary trace mineral selenium may reduce severe birth defects caused by Zika, a recent study at the University of Carolina study revealed. How many of you have never heard of this and you won't hear about it and you share this video and people look at you like you don't know what you're talking about when you're trying to save their life? The study, which was released in July, but received scant media attention, and uh, just, uh, Christelle's looking at me confused. Zika is a virus that took over South America, where the Olympics was. It says that the Zika mimics genetic disease known as PCCA by lowering selenium proteins, known as seleniproteins. Easy enough. This research strongly suggested selenium, which is a dietary trace mineral with proven ability to prove clinical to improve clinical outcomes of AIDS and HIV, I did not know that, and several other diseases could also be helpful in reducing the risk of neurological disorders and fetal abnormalities, read it right there, friends, caused by the Zika virus, um, including the birth defect that's characterized by a small head. We talked about it recently. The research suggests Zika virus may use a known genetic mechanism called antisense to block production of some of the human selenoproteins that are lost due to the genetic defect of PCA. So there you go. There's the study. There's the link to it. There's all the things you're going to need to know. Florida Governor Rick Scott said the State Department of Health has begun door-to-door -door outreach in Pinellas County testing individuals. Why isn't he doing that with selenium? Uh, is he an evil man who wants everybody to die because he's the devil? I don't think so. Maybe somebody should get a hold of uh, Rick Scott. Show them this video. Either that or steal it, make your own video and get it to him. I don't care, but I think this needs to be known. I think there's a lot of pregnant people in uh, in Florida that would like to know that their baby wasn't going to come out with a shrunken head like Beetlejuice, when all you got to do is take something like this. And that brings us, friends, to the dumb bee of the day. Uh, this is brought to you by the Seacrest Motel. Right there, you're looking at the Seacrest. It shows up, boom, booking.com. Now, when you go to the Seacrest Motel, and you might get the best price just by calling them, but when you book it, say, you know what, you know Sam and Christelle, uh, they might not know Christelle, but the guy with the long hair and the tattoos comes in, uh, goes to Cedar Point, they're going to know who you mean. Say, I listen to the correct views, and I would like to get a discount, and you're going to get a discount above and beyond, and we've done other price uh, matches on here. Well, you can see other hotels like the Breakers charging $225 a month, and you've got the Seacrest charging way under 100 And guys, you can tell by the music going on here, it's the Dumb D music, the Dumb D of the day. Uh, if I sent Dunce Caps overseas, this might have won for the month. BBC, that is the British Broadcasting Channel, still rejecting white job applicants. Jobs only open to black, Asian, or non-white ethnic minorities. Now, believe me, I'm not racist. As a matter of fact, my love of Asian women could almost be considered borderline illegal. All right, I'm kidding. But listen, friends, all jokes aside, if you don't kid, then you die. The BBC is still recruiting job applicants based on skin color, despite the controversy over its hiring practices that erupted earlier this year. Do you see what they're doing? Divide, divide, divide. Now, I don't know anybody, nobody at all, that dislikes Asian people. There's probably very few people I know that don't like black people. I can name a few black people that don't like white people. I get it. Not many. 
by and large, I don't know anybody at all that just, you never hear anybody, man, I hate those freaking Asians. Uh, has that ever been said? No, said nobody ever. So no, I'm not going on a rant. I'm going on, or I should say a rant against equality. I'm going on a rant here against inequality. I mean, there simply is, let me just fix this screen share. There simply is no other way to put it, friends. The job advertisement posted on July 29th, and there's a link, states that in no uncertain terms, the creative access position is only open to UK nationals from a black, Asian, or a non-white ethnic minority. Yeah, because nobody likes Monty Python or uh, Benny Hill. You know, they were white, so they weren't funny, right? Sorry, they were mind-blowingly hilarious. Additionally, the website for creative access attempts to justify the racial discrimination by claiming that the media cannot reflect society if society is not reflected by the media. In other words, the BBC wants to reflect racism in society rather than disavow it. Also, what if you said, well, I own a black station. Oh, I, I own a white station. And I, most predominantly white listeners. So I'm not going to hire a black person because or an Asian person. Because you know what? They might not be able to relate to the average American. What kind of freaking insult is that? I would never say that to someone. But it's okay to say, you know, we have a lot of black people here. And your average white person just won't know how to speak to them. What kind of divisive BS have we come to accept in this world? It says, imagine the backlash if the mainstream media discovered a company hiring whites only. Thousands of reporters would condemn the company until the company goes under. Of course, the regressive media will claim reverse racism doesn't exist due to colonialism. But no one living today was alive during the peak injustices of the European empire several centuries ago. Moreover, the West did not have a monopoly on discrimination and abuse. Just about every culture in society is guilty of oppressing others. There is nothing uniquely Western about colonialism, writes Denise Souza. Now, this is very, very important. Listen to everything I'm about to say to you. My native country of India, for example, was ruled by the British for more than two centuries. And many of my fellow Indians are still smarting about that. What they forget, however, is that before the British came, the Indians had been invaded and conquered by the Persians, the Afghans, Alexander the Great, the Mongols, the Arabs, and the Turks. Therefore, every color on God's rainbow of human experience has managed to oppress the Indians. Basically, Indians have been oppressed by everyone. Um, so, what's that mean? What's that mean for you listening over here across the drink in America? Do you realize that the Indians were slaughtering each other in mass long before we ever got here? As a matter of fact, just to do some simple math. Did you pass the second grade? Look how many Native American Indians were in this country when the Pilgrims came over. And look how few pilgrims there were. Now, you can argue the whole gunpowder thing, but there's two things you need to know about that. One, gunpowder doesn't surmass sheer numbers. Second of all, the Indians had the guns within the first six to eight months. So, due to truces and whatnot. Do you realize even second grade math will tell you that the Indians would have whipped our white asses if they had not already been slaughtering each other long before we ever got here? And there are certain Indians to this day that do not like other tribes, and they don't even really mingle much at powwows. And this was taught to me by my friend Glenn, who is himself Native American. So this idea that whites were the only one to oppress people is ridiculous. Uh, any civilization that has had the upper hand has historically oppressed those that have not. And that shifts throughout history. It's not based on color. It's based uh, on things like circumstances, drought, famine, location, and ability to transport goods. Um, depending on how you count, it says, the British were preceded by at least six colonial powers that invaded and occupied India in ancient times. Indeed, ancient India was itself settled by the Aryan people, who came from the north and subjugated the dark-skinned indigenous people. And those who identify colonial, colonialism and empire with only the West either have no sense of history, he added, 
shouldn't it be the Arabs be paying reparations for their destruction of the Byzantine and Persian empires, the Sersen con continued? Come to think of it, shouldn't the Byzantine and Persian people be paying reparations to the descendants of the people that they subjugated? While we're at it, shouldn't the Muslims reimburse the Spaniards for over 700 years of rule? And look up the amount of butchery that happened during that as well. The BBC's racial hiring practices, it said, first made headlines back in May, and there we talked about that. So friends, that's the dumb of the day. That is, I hate whitey, hate Asian, divide people, keep us apart, do anything we can. Because if we actually get our act together, we might be able to realize that we're all being hosed by the same power. <laughs> Friends, do me a favor. Please donate if you can. You, know, you can donate three ways now. The correct views at Hotmail.com. You can go to Patreon. You can uh, donate at nhornsby at Yahoo.com. And you can also get these. Look at this right here. These are $5. If you want both of them, they are $7. Uh, this one is going quick, though, so you better hurry up. The yellow one's flying. $5 gets you one sticker, $7 gets you two. Uh, nhornsby at yahoo.com. Just put the money on the PayPal account or get a hold of me at Hotmail. Correct views at Hotmail.com. And I will get them sent out to you, and it helps the show. It helps the show a lot. Good night. Thank you for your help, your love, your support, and your sharing. Good night, friends.